the idea behind the alleged perpetrator was that more to reach to the international community and uh, it was i think the first such uh, effort made uh, uh, in india and pakistan or in any asian country we have some incident in 1984 when that right some mm, figures were given but uh, documenting the official record then taking the statement of the of the victim and then compiling it and the idea was to reach the international community reminding them about the responsibility they have so the people who have committed the crimes against humanity or war crimes or uh, or crimes even against the their own municipal laws they should not get away so alleged perpetrator report in which we have identified 500 perpetrator was an effort to bring the names of the perpetrators in public domain because we believe that uh, the state is not trying to take them to task there is uh, as far on for the special powers act which gives impunity to law enforcement agencies amnesty international in a report released on the 30th of june 2015 says that 25 years after the introduction of the armed forces special powers act in jammu and kashmir the law continues to feed a cycle of impunity for human rights violations the report titled denied failures in accountability for human rights violations by security force personnel in jammu and kashmir documents the obstacles to justice faced in several cases of human rights violations believed to have been committed by the indian security force personnel in jammu and kashmir it focuses particularly on section 7 of the armed forces jammu and kashmir special powers act 1990 also known as the afspa under which the report says the central government has denied permission or sanction to prosecute in cases brought against members of the army or paramilitary or in a very few cases kept the decision pending for years this has resulted in not a single member of the security forces deployed in the state being tried for human rights violations in a civilian court the army dismisses more than 96% of all allegations of human rights violations against its personnel in jammu and kashmir as false or baseless but the evidence for this claim is not publicly available are even the police officials they can't be prosecuted because there is section 197 of the crpc you have to get the permission from the state which they never give there is a legal impunity there is a political impunity and there is almost moral impunity you know whatever they are doing they have they are doing a commendable job to the india to the government of india and fighting the proxy war which is the a uh, narrative of the state so here on the other hand when you are seeing there are you know systematic and institutional repression here 8000 and four disappearances and 7000 mass graves are not cannot be an individual crime it is the a pattern a uh, a matter of policy what they were saying that doctrine of subconventional warfare the indian doctrine that how they have to operate in kashmir to neutralize the militant and also to uh, to break the will of the non combatant uh, meaning the civilians kashmiris yeah which they are doing because we are not an ngo we believe that the role is to expose the lies of the indian state to speak truth the truth which is hidden hidden in graves or hidden in at different forms and to bring it in a public uh, to highlight it to document it because me, we believe that unless and until that it is not uh, made an issue and uh, otherwise it is going to continue otherwise it will be repeated it will be repeated uh, in future also yeah
So if we have these perpetrator whom we have named and whom we are again naming, some of them are very top officials, they are after retirement living in their farm houses, in their comfortable zones, Delhozi and other places because they are there. Say the case of the Kanan Poshpura, you know, these officials, 19 officials there. So we want that uh, they should give the sense of accountability. They cannot get away. And the job of the civil society is to, uh, which, is, which we believe is to engage with the internet, global civil society and reminding them about the responsibility they have. Suppose if these perpetrators are visiting the different countries, then the different countries who have their laws that the perpetrator will not be allowed in their country, or if they are, they have to give a declaration there in the visa application, they have not been violating any laws, particularly the human rights, if they are suppressing it, there's a crime there, and even if they go there, they manage to go there, then there is a universal jurisdiction. Under the universal jurisdiction, the perpetrator can be taken to justice in many countries, in, the, in Western countries, if they have committed any crime.